<laughs> Hello to everybody. I um, um, I hope I will uh, I will stay short. Uh, focus. I just want to say something about um, the need uh, uh, for collaboration, and um, uh, that's drawn from my experience as um, a teacher at this university. Uh, being lucky enough to teach in other universities, but also have a practice and how um, collaboration is important for um, for a practice. practice. Um, so let me start with this um, with this image. Um, uh, contemporary urbanization processes are very complex. Um, somewhere cities are growing, outgrowing into the countryside. Sometimes um, cities are trying to or have to um, grow inwards um, again, uh, which would raise, uh, should raise our awareness for the protection and importance of open spaces. And um, for this, um, it's for sure that collaboration in open space design need to start on the level of uh, good, urban, uh, good urban planning, because our goal is a space um, a good space in which we will be able to live in and uh, we could shape for future generations. Certainly, we don't want uh, to live in these doomed spaces of uh, the two uh, uh, last lovers left alive that were these uh, gloomy night landscapes of uh, Detroit and Tangier. Uh, so in order to um, achieve this, um, I think we need to start in education. Um, you have already heard that in, um, at the University of Ljubljana we have um, two faculties, um, well, three basically, but two uh, that, that are dealing with spatial um, design. One is the Faculty of Architecture, and the second one is um, the Biotechnical Faculty, the faculty which has a study of landscape architecture, and there is also of uh, a study of spatial um, planning at the Faculty of Engineering. And uh, since it's sometimes formally very difficult to uh, educate students in all these directions, and especially how they need to work together, how their efforts uh, could be um, synergetic, um, we just do it um, informally. And um, the goals um, of um, the goals of these collaborations basically is getting information about the differences and similarities of these two professions. Um, the goal is to enable students to exchange concepts, knowledge, sensitivity, skills and poetics, as well as they could through being mixed in the groups, you know, and really trying to understand problems from different aspects, uh, they are forced to shed away prejudice and stereotypes. Uh, and above all, this uh, education probably could uh, lead to um, um, a fruitful collaboration in a real life practice. So I'm just gonna briefly show a few projects that have been done in last decade uh, in collaboration with, between the two faculties in various forms, either in one studio or two studios with two professors or one professor, and, but basically with um, uh, student exchange. Uh, and then I will also show uh, two projects from uh, my uh, own practice. So this was a small municipality uh, to the south, uh, southwestern edge of uh, Slovenia. Um, in which this collaboration between the two teams resulted in, um, in a proposal to the municipality to change the plans in, uh, instead of building, instead of building uh, um, a new housing at this area, it's better to move the sports facility here and fill in the gap in housing. So this way they could uh, preserve the quality of urban of urban space. That's just the one to show. And the collaboration was very fruitful, I think, in this respect. Also, municipality finally decided not to build the housing, so they now are keeping the sports arena the same way. Uh, the second one was a bit um, more complex, maybe, because it really involved urban planning. Another, it's another small municipality. Um, planning to um, on the road between the two 
uh, Trieste, Rijeka, and Ljubljana on the crossroad. So it, uh, between the two, uh, three countries, they need to build a new bypass road. And the municipality lies uh, on, on the edge of two landscape system, on the hilly area and of the flooding, uh, flooding area of the river. So students basically had to uh, figure out what are the priorities and then um, uh, the priorities of connections that we heard uh, about already for the systems to still function, how to build on the identity of little streams that uh, uh, were used for um, uh, sea saws in, um, in the past of uh, the economic evolution of the town and then they had to uh, do housing areas uh, according to the preset, uh, to the um, goals that they have set uh, by themselves. Um, that's it. Then the last one, uh, the, the, this one is um, the one that was um, um, dealing with the problem of flooding at the edge of uh, Ljubljana. Uh, it was evoking, it was evoking old, sorry, it was evoking old um, uh, marshland housings from the prehistory and trying to transform it into new small-scale housing. The tasks were dividing, divided between the students of architecture and landscape architecture. You can see on the model, um, students of landscape architecture were, were dealing with the floodplains and the fields in the back, and architects were trying to uh, develop a new house, uh, a new form of, a new type of housing for precisely this uh, same um, area. Then there's the one that actually was um, an, on a more small scale, not that much on the urban uh, design scale, that dealt more, dealt more with the poetics of a space. It's a memorial grove in one of the northern towns. Uh, bearing the grave of um, the greatest poet. So students um, um, worked in teams and um, it actually showed the differences in approaches very well. Uh, sometimes architects have withdrawn completely from entering the area of a grove. And um, um, for example, they have built a new area on its outer edge. And students of land, sorry, students of landscape architecture uh, dare to intervene in the grow with the um, with the vocabulary uh, of the garden art history, um, and um, or students of architecture built, for example, the walls, but the walls were not. Um, built in the ground because the ground is a memorial site, site so they have to invent uh, specific engineering uh, forms of uh, the um, uh, load, um, uh, of how the load would be um, taken without uh, digging into the ground. So this was um, um, uh, where they really exchange uh, the um, ideas and, and also um, exchange their um, approaches and uh, poetics. And from my own practice, um, it's the sport, the, the first really big collaboration being involved as a landscape architect was the sports park Stojice to the edge of Ljubljana in a big gravel pit at um, the very dense. Um, um, high-rise um, um, residential area at the line, a memorial line that goes around Ljubljana all the way and uh, with uh, both protected forests as a re re residue of uh, riparian landscape. And uh, th this was the plasticity of the space uh, that uh, we, together with Southern and Vuga architects, tried to um, preserve uh, the character of the space with the new intervention. Basically, we have filled in the, um, the gravel pit uh, and inserted four objects um, in it. The sports hall, the stadium, the shopping center, and the park over it. Um, oh, the, the beginnings were very ambitious. This is a, 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 the workshop with which we started. 
uh, and it included the Trans Solar and Over Arup and KSS consultants also uh, in order to make it really ecologically efficient, uh, but then the budget got, got uh, cut down a lot. Uh, nevertheless, I mean, this um, collaboration of many te teams resulted in, um, um, in, in the decision about plasticity, about the decision how to tie it with the existing neighborhood and how to tie it into the whole green system of Ljubljana. It was um, built like this in 2010 and then the construction unfortunately stopped because of the crisis. Um, it works um, still. Then from you know this construction uh, site on Sadar and uh, Vuga architects were of course the leaders of the project. We were working on our own tasks but uh, without uh, collaborating at the beginning we wouldn't be able to create some, the amount for public spaces that we planned to and the investor actually accepted. We will see how the future of this park will evolve. It still works as a recreational um, area, uh, although the amount built is uh, highly, highly reduced. And um, the second big project uh, on which um, we worked and just finished quite recently is the uh, Nordic Center Planica to the north of uh, Slovenia. Um, we entered the competition with the um, studio Abiro, Matej Blenkus and Miloš Florjančić. Uh, and then um, the decision of the jury made us collaborate with another architectural team. So we had to find um, um, the way to communicate and um, to harmonize um, three ways of doing it, three ways of looking at the problem, three ways of uh, uh, understanding the problem, and also three, three poetics, um, which uh, resulted in a um, Nordic ski center, which uh, looks like it has been uh, there um, forever. Uh, many people say, what have you done? I mean, there's nothing... Uh, nothing has changed, and I think this is quite, um, um, quite good for a landscape architect to, to hear. So I'm going to give um, my uh, microphone to Matej Blenkus, uh, who will um, talk about uh, the ways of collaboration. These are the schemes. Um, the one um, architectural, one design decision was to uh, change the symmetry of the ski jumps to create an order in the space, which was then translated in the topography, but also enabled all the uh, functions of uh, such a festivity space. Thank you. Uh, thanks to the organizers that they have invited the architect to this splendid uh, company of landscape architects. I am a sort of an odds man out, I guess, but I hope that our uh, proofs of fruitful collaboration will prove that the disciplines are more tied together than we sometimes think. Actually, the 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 project Planica is sort of a quite uh, visual and fi quite um, illuminating uh, project which will show the interdisciplinarity in various ways. I would say that the interdisciplinarity could work in two general uh, concepts. One is that you work parallel and the other one is that you work vertical. So in uh, in most of the cases, uh, uh, our task, the task of the, the architects of the, the ski jumping part was to basically bring all the sources, all the engineering information, all the parts together and to compose something like a whole, a whole of, of the Nordic center or the ski part of the Nordic center. When we think about managing the sum or the managing how to combine parts together, there could be various approaches. One would be just take 
parts and bring them together and then we have a sum of parts. And then this would be a general engineering approach. I expect, uh, respect everyone who is uh, part of the project and then I just take uh, all together and combine it whatever I get out of this process. The other approach which would be quite opposite and which is common in times of architecture is that we try to basically produce the parts, for example, how to deal with electricity, how to deal with plumbing, how to deal even with water management, almost everything by ourselves, so like a control freaks. And this is in case of uh, small scale projects like private houses. We usually do the electricity by ourselves and we do even some of the mechanical installations by ourselves just to take, be sure, be on the safe side that everything is as it should be. But in case of Planitza, this would be of course impossible. We don't have knowledge, we don't have people, we don't have resources. So we took, took the third uh, approach, which is managing of parts. So we combined most, most of the, the logic of particular disciplines and try to steer them together to get to the coherent whole. And I think that was actually the, the art of managing the disciplines to construct basically the, the, what is now called the Nordic Center. And I would say that the design as, as, a, as a knowledge which we gain in our faculty is a tool of interdisciplinarity. I would go just for a second back to, to the presentation which I, was, which I heard by Hank Ovink. He's a special envoy for international water affairs appointed by the Netherlands and the, 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 the lecture was in Detroit last year. And he said that the water management is becoming actually so complex today in terms of politics, in terms of ecology, in terms even of, of social aspects, that design can produce fruitful, that only design can produce, produce fruitful results. So if we go back to, to, to Planitza, actually by design, we could combine really various disciplines like structural engineering, mechanical installation, landscape, sports technology, environmental concerns, economical concerns, and many, many other aspects of design of this project. What was really an uh, advantage for us in this case is there is a really, really lacking of, of existing typologies. So when you try to, to design something, you very often come to the, the point that you start to use what was done before. For example, the, the typologies of housing, the typologies of, of administrative building. But in case of ski jumps, there is not a large vocabulary of um, possible solutions. And even if there are, they are over the budget, which was in case uh, in Slovenia. So we, we had to invent everything anew. And here, actually, the design becomes a very powerful tool to, to combine those parts together and to produce new kind of forms. The governing principle, of course, is a force which is strong enough to steer all the various aspects of various disciplines to the common goal. In case of Planitza, there were really very, very simple uh, uh, governing principles. And one would be a very solid and robust base structure, which holds everything together. And same goes also with the landscape. A very simply defined but geometrically ordered landscape, which holds everything together. As a result, there is a simplified solution without any real formal elements. They're just things which are put into proper place, at proper time, and in proper scale. I should say that the, the, the 
probably the most important lesson which we learned during this process is the necessity of abstraction. Actually, if you have so many elements like valves, pipes, measuring elements for, for, for speed of wind, measuring elements for the speed of ski jumpers, the, the, the things which pump up water from the ground with the things which distribute water over the, the, the ski jumps, then there is no place actually for architecture. Why would I add another element if there are so many things already there? So we decided intentionally that we would not do any formal decisions. We'll just use these governmental principles and try to combine everything together. And it worked. It worked in, on the scale, on a small scale. For example, in this fence, you use basically a very common solutions for, 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 for infrastructure, like road design. And those design solutions work well together with other elements of, of infrastructure. But on a larger scale, when you start to perceive the project from, from, from far, then the, these governing principles become actually the only formal thing. And for, for that reason, they become what, in, in essence, the coherent whole of the project is. And as a result, and I think that's actually quite, quite important, that behind the process of, of combining various, various elements, there is a result, the, monument, the monumentality, which produces uh, something like a sublime effect of, of this project. So maybe it's quite hard to, to explain it in few words, but I would say that, that doing with, with so many aspects, reducing our ambitions to produce new architecture at the end, defines, defines basically an autonomous form, a form of, of construction which is not made by men, it's not made by uh, an artist, it's something like a constructed ruin, so it's just I think Marty uh, said today, is the basic abstract geometry, which at the end of the day, works in perfect uh, tune with the landscape and with the surrounding nature. Thank you.